Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to my sheep. Here's my voice ministries. In Psalms 34 and 1, the word of God says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. On today, my lesson is going to be from Proverbs chapter 6, 16 through 19. And the word of God reads, Six things doeth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Now, in Proverbs chapter 16, we know that God loves us and we know that God hates evil. God is love, but he hates evil. In 1 John 4 and 19, the word of God reads, we love him because he first loved us. Ecclesiastes 3 and 8 reads, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. So we know that there is a time to love, and we also know that there is a time to hate. Now we find that there are seven things God hates, and this is the list. Number one is a proud look. What is a proud look? Feeling honored. A proud look is a big attitude. A proud look is swaggering around and you want everybody to see you. Instead of saying, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer, they saying, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. I want to be honored. I want to be seen. I want people to see my accomplishments and all of the things that I have done. And we have to realize that without God, none of this would be possible. Without God, we couldn't teach the word of God. Without God, we couldn't sing. Without God, we couldn't teach. Without God, we couldn't read. Without God, we couldn't see. Without God, we couldn't use our limbs and our feet and our arms and our fingers to eat. We couldn't smell. We couldn't do anything without the Lord. If we went to school for four years and got a degree, if it wasn't for the Lord, we would not be able to do it. And that's one of the things that God hates is a proud look. Someone that's swaggering around and walking around with their head so far up as far as Mount Everest. He, that's not how God wants us to walk around. That is not how God wants us to walk around. In Proverbs 21 and 4, the word of God says, A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. So God don't want us walking around being proud with a high look, walking around thinking that we're better than other people because nobody is better than the next person. We all are equal in the eyes of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So nobody can walk around proud with a high look, thinking that they're better than the next person. I don't care if you've been saved longer than the next person. That does not make you better than the next person. The second thing that God hates on that list will be a lying tongue. A lying tongue. Just lying about everything. Don't know how to tell the truth about nothing. Always lying. It just have to be a lie. Untrue statements. Making untrue statements about people. Just because somebody may have made you mad, now you're going around saying things about a person that's not true. Deception. Deception is lying because deception is you misleading and hiding the truth. You tell a person so much, but then you add on to it to make it sound good. So I'm going to tell you half of the truth. That's deception. But then the rest of it is going to be a lie. That is what a lie. That is lying. A lying tongue. Promoting unbelief. Promoting a belief that is not true. Promoting false doctrine. That's lying. The word of God is the word of God. He said we don't add to his word and we don't take away from it. So a lying tongue, untrue statements, saying things that's not true, deception, misleading by hiding the truth, promoting beliefs that's not true, promoting false doctrine. God is not pleased with that. In Proverbs 12 and 22, the word of God says lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But they that deal truly are his delight. So what is the Lord saying? The ones that tell lies and lie about everything, they are an abomination unto the Lord. But the ones that tell the truth, they are his delight. 
When you can tell the truth, even when it hurts, that is the Lord's delight. He wants us to be truth tellers, not liars. That's number two on the list that God hates is a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Now, what is hands that shed innocent blood? In Matthew 26, 47 and 48, Judas was a good example of somebody that shed innocent blood. Well, he betrayed innocent blood, which led to the shedding of innocent blood. In Matthew 26, 47 and 48, the word of God says, And while he yet spoke, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with a great multitude with swords, they came with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. So what did Judas do? He betrayed innocent blood, which led to the shedding of innocent blood, Jesus Christ. So that is hands that shed innocent blood. And this is happening today right now in the world. A lot of us shed innocent blood. We do that. In, in Romans 3, 15 and 18, the word of God says their feet are swift to shed blood. They quick to go kill someone. They don't even think twice about it. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Nothing good is in the way of a person that, ha that, that, that have hands that shed innocent blood. There's nothing good in their way. The way of peace, they have not known. They don't know anything about making peace. People that have hands that shed innocent blood, that's what they like to do. That's what they do. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They don't fear the Lord. They don't think that the wages of sin is death. They don't believe that because they're so busy out here doing things that's rebelling against God. Exodus 20 and 13 says, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Let's stop killing each other. And hurt each other. And saying things to hurt each other. God don't like that. He don't like a proud look. He don't like a lying tongue. And he do not like hands that shed innocent blood. They are an abomination unto him. Let's go to number four. Number four, a heart that divides wicked imaginations. Now what is a heart that divides wicked imaginations? Constantly thinking about wicked things. Constantly thinking about what can I do to stir up some trouble? What can I do to hit a lick? What can I do to get some money? Get a job. A heart that divides wicked imaginations. Always sitting around trying to figure out what can they do to commit crimes? What can I do to get something started with this person? What can I do to tear this person down? How can I get some money and rob this person? What can I, is that's what a heart that divides wicked imaginations, that is what God hates that. That is an abomination to the Lord. You don't have nothing good in your mind to think about. All we do is sit around and think about how we can tear something down or tear something up all the time. How we can destroy something. How we can get quick cash. Just, just your mind is not in the right place. Matthew 15 and 19 says, For out of the heart perceive evil thoughts. Always think of something evil. Murderers, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. These are the things that proceed from the heart. From out of the heart. Genesis 6 and 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That means all day long. All day long, all we did all day long is just think of what we can do to be rebellious against God. And the reason why we be rebellious against God, because the word of God says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. We don't sit down and open up our word of God and see what thus says the Lord. And that's how we be in rebellion against the Lord all day, all day long, because we do not take time to read our word. 
So we don't know what's expected of us. Sometimes we think the Bible says there is a way that seems right unto a man. We think because we are a good person, we because we pay our tithes and offering, because we open up the door for someone, because we help an elderly person in the car, that's not going to get you into heaven. You have to repent and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's more to it than just think I'm a good person, so I'm going to automatically make it in. I gave somebody $20, I'm going to make it in. That's not going to help you. Only what you do for Christ is going to last. That's what this is saying. The next one on the list is number five, feet that be swift and running to mischief. Feet that be swift running into mischief. What is this saying? Always ready to go looking for trouble. That's what feet that be swift and running to mischief mean. Always quick to go looking for trouble. I get up in the morning, I put on my clothes, and the first thing I do is go find my buddies and we finna find something to get into. What can we do today? Yesterday, we were stealing. Yesterday, we were um, uh, uh, smoking. Yesterday, we was drinking. Yesterday, we rode around and robbed somebody. Let's see what we can do today. That's what this is. This is, a, is an abomination unto the Lord. Feet that be swift and running to mischief. God hates that. Run your feet to the house of the Lord. That's what God wants to see your feet run to. Run to the house of the Lord. Run to the house and get your word of God and sit down and read your Bible. Run yourself to work and make an honest wages for the day. Run your feet over someone's house and be a blessing unto them. That's what God wants us to run our feet to. He don't want us to run our feet into mischief and go do sin and do things to hurt people. That's what that means when it says feet that be swift and run into mischief. In Proverbs 1, 11 through 15, if they say, come with us, come on with us. We're getting ready to go over here and break into this house. Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lay in wait for them. We're going to see them. We're going to take them out. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. And that is going on in the world today. People sit around and lurk to see who they can rob and who they can hurt. For no reason, an innocent person walking out their house get mugged for no reason. This is what this is talking about. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. Let's take them out. Let's take them out. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Come on, let's do it. Let's ride with us. Ride with me. Hang with our clique. Let's be a part of our game. Because what we do, we do it big. We get money. We get drugs. We get this and that. Let's be a part of us. We break into houses. We, that, that is what this is saying in Proverbs 1, 11 through 15. Come on and be a part of us. Look at what we do. Look how our feet be, be swift to running into mischief. L let's see how we do it. Let's have a lying tongue. Is that not what it says? Let's have hands that shed innocent blood. Okay? Let's have a proud look and walk around thinking that we better than other people and scaring people and stuff. Okay, in Proverbs 4 and 15, the word of God says, My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. That's 11, Proverbs 1, 11 through 15. Proverbs 4, 15 says, avoid it. Pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. That means get far away from people that have feet that run into mischief. Get far away from them people. Don't walk on the same path as those people. Turn from it. Avoid them. That's what the word of God is saying. The next thing on God's list is a false witness that speak lies. Speaking untruth about your neighbor. That's going on right now today too. Because it's a lot of unfalse statements. People uh, go to court and lie on a person to win a case. All kind of stuff go on. A false witness that speak lies. In Exodus 20 and 16, the word of God says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That means going around lying against your neighbor, saying things about your neighbor that's not true. 
Proverbs 19 and 5 says, A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speak lies shall not escape. When you go around and lie on people, you're not getting away with it because you will have to take an account for the words that you said. You will have to take an account for that. We're not getting away when we hurt, when we say hurtful things about people or when we get out here and spread rumors about people and say things that make people just feel low. We're not getting away with that. God says for every idle word that we speak, we will have to give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Proverbs 19 and 9, a false witness shall not be unpunished. Here we go again. This is twice the Lord said this in Proverbs 19. He said, a false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speak lies shall perish. Now, we go back up to Proverbs 19 and 5. The word of God says, a false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speak lies shall not escape. So he put this in Proverbs twice. Twice he said, a false witness shall not be unpunished. That means you will be punished. God is going to punish, uh, punish us when we say things hurtful against people. And number seven on the list, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. What is God saying? He that soweth discord among, between people. When you sow discord among the brethren, you start disagreements between people. And that's how all the confusion gets started. Well, I'm going to go over here and tell Susie what Billy said. And then by the time Billy and Susie see each other, they fighting and arguing and busting each other side the head with bricks because I couldn't keep my mouth closed. Because I went around and I had to go back and tell Susie what Billy said. And then I went back and told Billy what what told I went back and told Susie what Billy said about her. And now it's a big old thing going on. Now it's a big old fight going on. And what did I do? I sold discord among the brethren. That's an abomination unto the Lord. He hates that. He don't like gossiping and backbiting and going back, getting stuff started among the brethren. He wants us to love each other. And that's why God hates that. That's why he hates that. He loves us, but he hates the sin that we surrender ourselves to. He hates that. In Proverbs 5 and 11, the word of God says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Show them what they're doing that's wrong. If you know someone is gossiping and sowing discord among the brethren and saying things about people that is not right, use the word of God to, 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 lovely, to lovingly correct them. This is what God is saying. Have no fellowship with a person that sow discord among the brethren all the time. You don't want to be around that person because if you do, then, then eventually you're going to start sowing discord among the brethren. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Don't be, don't, don't, don't socialize with these types of people. Remove your feet from these type of people. What did the word of God say in Proverbs 4, 15? Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Get away from it. In Matthew 5 and 9, the word of God says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, this is what God wants. He don't want us to sow discord among the brethren. The Lord wants us to be peacemakers. If someone come up to you and tell you something about someone, then be a peacemaker. Let them know they didn't mean no harm. And if you felt like that they did anything to hurt you or harm you, just go to that person and talk to them. If you, can't, if you cannot let it go through prayer, then it's best you go back and talk to that person and figure it out so y'all can get back on one accord. That's, that's what being a peacemaker is. Is, is. If it's bothering you that bad where you can't move past it and forgive that person, then you need to go to that person and y'all need to sit down and talk about it. That's being a peacemaker. And even if that person go off on you and don't accept what you're trying to do to be a peacemaker, God saw your effort. God saw what you did, and that's all that counts. Now it's on that person. Their, their heart was in the wrong place. Yours was in the right place. Theirs was in the wrong place. Psalms 34 and 14, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Let's read that again. 
Proverbs 34, 14, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And that's what God wants us to do today. He wants us to seek peace and pursue it. He doesn't want us to have a lying tongue. He doesn't want us to have that. He doesn't want us to have a high look walking around thinking that we're better than the next person. He don't want us to sow discord among the brethren. No, God don't want us to do that. He don't want us to have feet that be quick and to run into mischief. He don't want that. God don't want that for us. He does not want us to have a lying tongue. God loves us, and he only wants us to do what's right. He wants us to be lights. He doesn't want us to be a part of the things that's going on in the world. He wants us to stand out and be ye separated from the things that's going on in the world. In the way we look, in the way we dress, in our conduct, our conversation, everything. He said, let your conversation always be seasoned with salt. Now, I know a lot of us use seasoning salt. I know I do. And it makes your food taste good. So just imagine you using your mouth like seasoning salt. And every time you open your mouth, you sprinkling good all over people. You sprinkling that good old word of God, using your mouth to sprinkle God's word all over the people and letting God's word do what it do. That's what God want us to do. And that was my lesson on today. Six things do what the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And we don't want nothing to be found in our lives that is an abomination unto the Lord when we stand before him in the day of judgment. I love you all. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I will see you next time. God bless.